With Beyond's continuous coverage coming in on the ASEAN summit, it is day two of the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Thailand. And Prime Minister Modi has co-chaired the 16th ASEAN India summit with his Thai counterpart Prayut Chanocha, on whose invitation he is visiting the country. This is Prime Minister's seventh ASEAN India summit. He highlighted that ASEAN is an integral part of India's Act East policy. He said that India was looking forward to strengthening cooperation with the member nations. Let's listen into what he had to share. Bharat ki Act East policy, our Indo-Pacific region ka ek mahatvapoorn bhag hai. ASEAN, our Act East policy ka marm hai aur sadey rahega. इंटीग्रेटेड संगठित और आर्थिक रूप से विकासशील आसियान भारत के बुनियादी हित में है मैं हाल ही में आसियान इंडिया एफटीए की समीक्षा के निर्णय का स्वागत करता हूं इससे हमारे आर्थिक संबंध न सिर्फ और मजबूत बनेंगे बल्कि हमारा व्यापार भी और बैलेंस होगा मैरिटाइम सुरक्षा ब्लू इकोनॉमी और मानवीय सहायता के क्षेत्रों में भी अपने साझेदारी को हम मजबूत बनाना चाहते हैं Earlier in the day, the Prime Minister highlighted that India is now one of the top destinations for foreign direct investment. Our GST has fulfilled the dream of economic integration of India. We want to work towards making it even more people friendly all of what i have said just now makes india one of the world's most attractive economies for investment friends india received 286 billion us dollar fdi in the last 5 years this is almost half of the total FDI in India in the last 20 years. We are among the top 10 FDI destinations as per UNCTAD. Moved up 24 places on the Global Innovation Index of WIPO in five years. And now let's quickly get in some perspective from the Indian context as far as ASEAN is concerned. For more, I'm joined in by Professor of Strategic Studies at Centre for Policy Research, Mr. Brahma Chalani, who's joining us live at this moment from New Delhi. A very warm welcome to you, Professor Chalani. Let's begin by asking you about Prime Minister Modi, who stated that he wants to see the Indian Northeast as the gateway to Southeast Asia under the government's Act East policy. Now, how significant could the connectivity plan between India, Myanmar and Thailand be? I think the focus on Southeast Asia by the Indian government is the correct uh, focus because if you look at the historical context, India had rich interaction with Southeast Asia, never faced a single invasion from the East. All the invaders to India came from the West. So the West historically has spelled a trouble for India, but the East has always meant peaceful coexistence, rich interaction, as well as opportunity for India to extend its cultural and economic domain to the countries to its east. And therefore, re-engaging with the east really means India is reorienting its foreign policy along the historical axis. All right, that's a fair way to put it across, like that India is orienting itself now back to one of those historical ties that it had. The RCEP, sir, has long been a serious bone of contention. Can signing the RCEP be detrimental to India's export ambitions, taking into consideration China's might in the global market and India's massive trade deficit with the country? Well, there are two things here to remember. First, India is an unusual large economy. It's the only large economy in the world other than the US, which is import dependent. It's not an export driven economy like China is an export driven economy. In fact, almost all Asian economies other than India are 
export driven economies. So India being an import driven economy, free trade agreements in the past have not worked to India's advantage. For example, India has a free trade agreement with ASEAN countries. But the fact is that since that free trade agreement was signed with ASEAN countries, India's exports to ASEAN have stagnated while imports mm -hmm. have increased significantly. The same will apply to RCEP. RCEP will be FTA with China via the back door. Right. Right, right now, India has FTAs with Southeast Asia, with Japan, with, with South Korea. It's negotiating one with Australia. So the real, uh, the real significance of RCEP for India would be an effective FTA with China, which is already dumping its goods in the Indian market in an increasing manner and reaping growing profits from lopsided trade with India. All right. That's a very valid point that you've made, and there's been much talk about this. How beneficial can the RCEP be to India if signed, and what kind of an FTA deal should India strike with essentially competitor countries like China, Australia, and New Zealand? I think uh, at this stage, given India's economic downturn, given the fact that Make in India has failed to take off, and given the fact that India has not benefited from the US-China trade war, by attracting manufacturing from China because a lot of manufacturing industries are relocating away from China. They're going to Vietnam, they're going to Philippines, they're going to um, Indonesia, but they're not coming to India. So given these realities, given the vulnerability of the Indian economy at this stage, signing the RCEP will make the economic and trade situation for India worse. All right, uh, that's actually a very radical statement to put it across uh, because uh, there's been a lot of promise coming in from the Indian Prime Minister when it comes to signing the RCEP. He said that he wants to see a win-win situation out here. But at the ASEAN-India Summit, the Indian Prime Minister also spoke about India jumping ranks on the global index for ease of doing business, also becoming one of the top destinations for FDI. Will Prime Minister Modi's big re-election mandate of boosting growth and jobs translate into a more open Indian economy and do it, Do you see it as a safe scenario? I think uh, Prime Minister Modi is clearly articulating the priorities of his government and those priorities are right. Indian economy needs to reform, it needs to open up, it needs to become more competitive. There can be no two opinions on that. But he's also talking about a win-win situation for India. In other words, signing RCEP cannot be win for China and loss for India. He wants a win-win situation, whether it's RCEP, whether it's the opening up of the Indian economy. And, and so far, the government has been on the right track. It has been seeking to ensure that India's national interests are safeguarded. Similarly, in the negotiations on RCEP, which are now at a decisive stage, India will seek to ensure that right. the RCEP that emerges is not detrimental to India's interests. All right, uh, Professor, according to a recent interministerial review, India's utilization ratio of its current FTA with ASEAN is just about 6% in contrast to other ASEAN countries who have a utilization of 36.3%. Do you not agree there are serious capacity issues that need to be addressed out here? Of course, there are capacity issues that uh, the Indian economy needs to address. And I think uh, the biggest um, bottleneck is the fact that the make in India, which was um, initiated by Prime Minister Modi with a lot of fanfare, that has not taken off seriously, largely because of Chinese dumping. If you look at the Chinese trade surplus with India, it has more than doubled in the last five years. As a result, even small-scale manufacturing in India is systematically being undermined, if not being killed by Chinese dumping. And given that reality, it has become very difficult for Indian industry to be competitive. Therefore, in Indian government needs to factor in these various realities and draft a, an economic policy that seeks to protect Indian industry, while at the same time trying to integrate India more with the global economy. Right. It's, a, it's a tough it's a tough challenge, but that, that is the gist of the challenge that the government of India faces.
All right, that is the challenge indeed. Uh, Professor, at a time of trade war, what would a free trade agreement mean for the United States, especially when it comes to its position in the Asia-Pacific, taking into consideration it has um, you know, some major allies, be it South Korea, Japan, India, Vietnam, all of these countries, if they do sign the deal, there will be, of course, greater engagement with China. The United States under President Donald Trump has put the focus on clinching trade deals, both with friends and with foes. For example, with Japan, the U.S. has clinched a trade deal recently with India. It's in the works and hopefully it will be signed in the coming weeks, if, if not coming months. But the RCEP is something that the U.S. does not favor. U.S. is not part of RCEP. U.S. is outside RCEP. Right. The U.S. looks at RCEP as a China-led and China-driven FTA. And if India does not come on board RCEP, Washington would be pleased. But as far as Washington's priority is concerned, it's clearly, it's clearly on signing bilateral trade agreements. The, the emphasis is on bilateralism, on bilateral trade accords. And with India too, Washington is emphasizing a bilateral trade deal. All right, before I call it a wrap, Professor, let's look at the political aspect of it. For all the opposition coming in from the Congress party on the domestic front, as far as the RCEP is concerned, at this point, ironically, it was the UPA which had agreed in January 2008 for a regional trading with China, including negotiations of ASEAN FTA. Now, the numbers have quite not worked out. Perhaps the politics on the issue only points out to the uncertainty that's dominating India's approach on trade. Would you agree? So the Congress party is taking a partisan position and being the opposition uh, party, uh, that's uh, understandable. The government of India is currently engaged in sensitive negotiations on RCEP. It is not closing the door, nor is it uh, committing itself to signing the, the RCEP. As the prime minister has made it very clear that India will come on board if the deal is fair, because Free trade has to be fair trade. And given the fact that India is an import dependent economy, India can leverage its imports in a manner to obtain a fair deal. And that really is at the center of India's negotiating stance in the current RCEP talks that are going on. All right, Professor, thank you so much for sharing all those valuable inputs with us here on this live broadcast on Beyond. We thoroughly appreciate your contribution.